there is quite a lot of gunfire going on around. But, hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I am out here today at a two-gun match up in Phoenix at the uh, Rio Salado Sportsman's Club. And I figured what better place and time to take the Shugart Clone M14. So uh, if you haven't seen my video on this already, that's uh, literally, in fact, that is a Blackhawk right there flying. No, that's an Apache. That's even cooler. All right. so with the Apache air cover in place. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous video on this rifle, definitely check it out. I'll link to it in the description text below. This is a clone of what Randy Shugart used in Mogadishu in the events that inspired the movie Black Hawk Down. So it's an Aimpoint 3000 red dot. It is an AIM 1D infrared laser, which I will not be using out here today in the desert during the daytime, all on. This is a semi-auto, very early Springfield M1A, but I have a dummy full auto trip lever on it to make it look like a proper M14, stocks painted. It's a freaking cool rifle. So that's my two gun rifle. My pistol is this guy, which is an actual surplus Delta Force customized 1911 that came out of the CMP. So hopefully these will run well for me today. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fun out here. It is rather North African desert-like here in the uh, Phoenix low desert. We got five stages, let's dive right in. <laughs> That's as bright as it goes. All right, let's get going here. First, let me just address the giant elephant in the room that you'll be seeing throughout the entire course of this video, and that is rifle malfunctions. We're gonna get our first one here in just a moment. Uh, this was like cripplingly bad for me through the entire match. Uh, very frustrating, very irritating. I don't know why it was happening. The gas plug was tight. Um, like this was a mixture of failures to fully chamber, failures to eject. Um, and then occasionally the, uh, it would fail one of those ways. And then the bolt would also be stuck in the forward position and I'd have to mortar clear the gun. So it ran great when I took it out to zero it and to test it out. And I have absolutely no idea what happened here. Uh, frankly, by the time I got done with this match, I was so frustrated with it that I didn't even really want to bother trying to figure out what was wrong with it. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about the match itself. This is, as I said in the beginning, a match up in Phoenix. It's a different two gun match than I normally go to. And this stage design is also quite different than what I'm used to, and thus perhaps what you're used to in seeing two-gun matches. So this is much more along the lines of a lot of close-range paper targets with a, a couple of long-ish, so 100 to 150, maybe 200 yard at the longest, uh, steel targets on most of the stages. Now, in this case, we had both white and brown paper. The white paper was to be engaged with rifle and the brown paper with pistol. So pretty much run through the, the rifle section and then you ditch the rifle in that barrel, as you saw, and then go through it with pistol. Now, this is a, a fairly high round count. We're talking yeah, typically 15 to 20 rounds of pistol on each stage, which isn't that big a deal for people with proper modern pistols. But uh, those of us are really me, <laughs> running an, a single stack 1911 here, I was doing lots of reloading. Now, I had so many issues with the rifle here that I actually parred out, uh, ran out of time on this stage, had to end it there. So you'll see all five of these stages. Uh, we do have five today, by the way, not four. Uh, all five of these are pretty similar in makeup. So this one is split across two bays. The first bay here is pistol. And uh, they're also doing sort of the kind of typical thing of hiding targets behind barrels. So you're first, you start at the, the front of the range, engage the steel targets behind the barrels, and then back up engaging paper targets as you go back. I will say uh, my 1911 here is very accurate. It just uh, also started malfunctioning on me on this match, which trust me, didn't make things any less irritating. Uh, no idea what it was. I had two different Wilson Combat 47D magazines that both just wouldn't work. Um, I don't know if they were not presenting the rounds high enough or what. They're great, uh, great magazines. But uh, once we're done with pistol, you dump it in the bin, go retrieve your rifle, and do the same sort of thing here. There's a whole bunch of white paper targets to be engaged. A lot of stuff that's really pretty close to the 180. That's uh, That's another 
sort of hallmark of uh, some of these uh, more IPSC-ish style matches. But once again, I start having issues with the rifle malfunctioning. Gets really, really irritating, uh, as I'm sure you can understand. So here, I had issues like three separate malfunctions trying to clear those two paper targets. The scoring on this, by the way, is uh, you have to get two alpha zone hits, or you could get one hit in the very center of the head portion of the target. And I initially decided to try and make those, but they were pretty hard, and I went to just two, two hits on each target instead. All right, two stages down. This is not going well, but I did at least bring a snack with me. I figured we would do historically appropriate lunch slash snack here. So we have humanitarian MRE. And I'm morbidly curious to find out just how bad these really are. All right, we have peas in tomato sauce, unfrosted toaster pastry, brown sugar. That sounds like a government issued Pop Tart. Oatmeal cookie, that's, that sounds okay. Lentil stew, vegetable crackers, that's probably horrendous. Strawberry jam, heater pack, no, shortbread cookie. Yeah, so there's the lentil stew ingredients, peanut butter. There's actually a lot in here. This is a full, full daily ration. There we go, there's the peas and tomato. So, do I do the lentil stew or the peas in tomato sauce? We're gonna go with the lentil stew. All right, this MRE package says it is a food gift from the people of the United States. Let's see if it was designed to make allies or enemies. There is nice solidified lentil stew. Mm. These humanitarian MREs are also, they're completely vegan, they're halal, they're kosher. They are suitable for every, I think every conceivable dietary restriction. So they can be given to literally anybody without causing a diplomatic stir. This is actually not terrible. Honestly, I'm really surprised. It may have some uh, digestive side effects down the road, but that's honestly not that bad. I mean, it's not great. It's not something you're going to go fight a war to get, but I'm only kind of moderately hungry, and it tastes pretty decent to me. So, not bad. What is bad is that the lentil stew from my humanitarian MRE was in fact the highlight of my day at the match. Again, I have no idea what's going on here. If I wasn't hitting the grip safety because of the gloves, which doesn't seem likely, but you can see the pistol's nice and accurate once I'm able to make it actually work. Uh, trigger's great, it's a, a very cool pistol. I'll have a full video on that pistol uh, coming up here at some point. Uh, this one's a little more of a jungle run sort of uh, course of fire. You go through, there are a bunch of paper targets along the edges. Engage them all with Come pistol. On. Once you get to the end of the pistol section, there is another little dump box for your pistol. Drop it and then load the rifle that you've been carrying on a sling up uh, to this point. M14 is not a super fast rifle to load. And then there's a bunch more uh, paper target uh, engagement at about five yards. Ooh, that one's, that one's tricky. That one's at like 15 yards. There are two right below the tower here to blast. And then there are four steel targets set uh, out between 100 and 175 yards or so. So 
in between having to mortar clear the rifle between what seemed like every single engagement, uh, I was actually, I really had no trouble making these hits. Uh, the Aimpoint 3000 is not particularly bright. I don't know, it might be that the battery I have in it is a little bit old. Um, I was able to see the dot, but just barely. Uh, in this Arizona bright sunlight, it would have been really nice to be able to turn it up about two or three more clicks. But it did work. Um, the targets are more visible in real life than they are here on video. They're surrounded by a, a yellow backer. All right, that's three stages down. Stage four, um, again, pretty similar. We're gonna start with a Texas Star. I gave up on the gloves thinking maybe that was part of my malfunction issue with the pistol. Again, it's a pretty darn accurate pistol. I have no trouble making hits with it when it's willing to load and work. Again, no idea what was going on here. Um, the pistol I will definitely sort out, figure out what was going on. Um, but a bunch of paper, more reliability problems with these magazines. They're good magazines. I don't know if I'm getting it across, but it's really annoying that it just kept not working. And again, like just mystery not working. <sighs> anyway, it could have been worse. Uh, Shugart had a much worse day than I had. So there is that. Uh, the kit looked super cool. I have to thank Jordan, my camera guy, for uh, loaning me the kit. He has this the whole outfit uh, from Gothic Serpent, Black Hawk Down. And that was a really fun part of the match for me. Now, it was kind of funny. Uh, I don't normally go to this particular match. The people there, like I've never, never shot with anyone else who was on my squad. And they were very much more typical competitive shooters, and they really clearly did not know what to make of this one weirdo uh, decked out in 1990s tactical gear who was, in fact, by far the worst performing shooter on the entire squad. So, uh, here I finished cleaning the paper, and there are now uh, three steel targets out at about 100 yards that you have to engage three times each. So a couple more... Uh, mortar clears to go and we'll actually get this stage finished up. By the way, I don't have individual times at the end of each of these stages because for some reason the practice score was set up with four stages when there were actually five and so I'm not really sure exactly what my scores were for each individual stage and which was which, which doesn't really make a big difference uh, as you'll see at the end. Uh, well, spoiler, I came in absolute dead last of anybody who actually completed all the stages in the match. All right, last stage of the day. How cool is it that the Rio Salado Sportsman's Club has a helicopter body that they use as a stage prop? Like, I couldn't have planned it any better for this to be my very last stage. Now, I had been hoping, of course, from the first two stages or so that the rifle's reliability, the pistol's reliability would improve over the, over the course of the day, things would get better. They, they did not get better. It was it was bad all the way through. So whew, hopefully you guys at least enjoyed watching me struggle bust through this. You can't tell just how badly I'm doing from the video, fortunately, because you can't see the paper target scoring. But uh, it, it wasn't great. So I'll leave you with this. Hey. Gordy's gone, man. I'll be outside. Good luck. All right, well that unfortunately was really pretty frustrating and disappointing. I have no idea what was going on with the rifle. Gas system's tight, like it was the same ammo, same mags that I used when we checked it all out at the range and it all worked then. And frankly, a 1911 had trouble too. Uh, all I can conclude is that all the stories about M14s, M1As, and 1911s are in fact true and they have reliability issues. Anyway, it's a, it's a bummer, but it was a very cool opportunity to come out here and essentially cosplay some pretty amazing uh, American heroes. And I've got a Pop-Tart. My humanitarian MRE included an actual Pop-Tart. Inside the military sealant is an actual Pop-Tart. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It is uh, perhaps something to reflect on, Shugart and Gordon's actions. And uh, we'll be back out here, try something else uh, 
next time for a two-gun match. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.